Hi everyone, welcome to AWS Data Engineer Training Program. And today we'll be talking about S3. That is one of the important and very common service provided by AWS. So S3 stands for Simple Storage Solution. And it will provide you the storage facility for many services. That means whether you are using AWS uh, EC2 for processing of your data or you are using Lambda functions or you are using any other type of processing engine, ultimately you need to store the data, input data as well as output data. So how to store the data, how to access the data, how to control the access so that there is no unauthorized access and all. So all these things we will be exploring in much more detail. So let's start the class with the agenda. So agenda for today's class is overview of S3 service, create bucket, data security and encryption, upload objects into bucket, data versioning and S3 storage classes. So all these things, whatever are listed here, We'll do it practically on my AWS trial account so that you can get more details about this. So let me open my AWS console and we will start doing it practically. Okay, so this one is my AWS console and I just logged in. On the left side, you can see that there are recently visited services because in last few days, we have talked about EC2 and we created one bucket yesterday because we wanted to list that bucket on our EC2 instance. We wanted to check whether we can perform any S3 related operations on the EC2 instance or not. And we also talked about IAM, right? So either you can directly click from here in case in your console S3 is not directly visible because you might not have accessed it once so in that case it will not be visible like this in that case you can always go into the this main search bar and search for s3 and click on s3 <laughs> yesterday we created one s3 bucket uh, very quickly we did not talk each and every uh, configuration but today's class is dedicated for S3 and we'll be doing everything from scratch. Okay. So first of all, we have to create a bucket. So you can click on create bucket and provide a unique name. And the name should be unique across all AWS accounts across the globe. So yesterday we have given some name, right? I can give some other name today. Sample bucket and some random number otherwise you know it will not create okay after that aws region so as i told you right that services are region specific there are few things which are not region specific one of the example is iam role when you are creating iam users you are creating groups roles those are not AWS region specific. Those are applicable in all the uh, regions. But while creating the bucket, you can specify the region. That means, suppose your EC2 instance is available in a particular region. Suppose it's available in US region. In that case, you should have the S3 bucket in the same region. The benefit is the latency will be less because your server has to read and write the data again and again from S3 bucket. And if your server and your S3 bucket are in two different regions and those are like far away, it will not give you a good performance. So in this case, as you can notice, like US East North Virginia region is auto automatically selected. So I can go with that. But in case you want to change it, it's completely possible. You can click on this uh, drop down and you can choose the region accordingly. So till now we have provided just the name and the region. 
the next is copy settings from existing bucket if you remember when we were creating the users in IEM role it was giving us the permission I mean it, it was giving us the option to copy the roles and permissions from another user because that will make the things more simpler same thing is here if you already have s3 bucket created and you have already configured a few settings to that and now you are creating a new bucket but you want to copy all the settings you can do that so in case you want to copy you can choose the bucket but in our case there is no such bucket available where we have configured all the settings so we'll we'll skip that and we'll be moving to the next section the next section is object ownership so there are two type of concept is there i will explain both one thing is suppose you are the owner of your bucket suppose this is your aws account and you are creating a bucket so definitely you are the owner of the bucket but you can give access to other users or maybe other aws accounts as well suppose i have my account and you have your account you have given permission to me to copy the data or to create new files or to upload new files into your s3 bucket that's possible you can even provide cross account access but the point is cross account access is fine the point is if i am uploading any file into your bucket then who will be the owner of that object i'm not talking about the ownership of the bucket bucket will be still owned by you because you created the bucket in your aws account but i am talking about the ownership of the objects ownership of the files uploaded into that bucket so there are two options either you will say that whoever will copy the file into my bucket that particular person will be the owner of that file that's one possibility another possibility is you will say that because i am the owner of my s3 bucket and the s3 bucket is created in my account so i should be the owner for each and every object irrespective of whether i uploaded that file or someone else uploaded that file into my bucket so you can read the first one acl disabled recommended that is the recommended way nowadays all objects in the bucket are owned by this account you may give the permission to other accounts to copy the data here that's possible but ownership will be still with this account access to this bucket and its objects is specific using only policies that means access we can manage we can allow other teams other aws accounts to read or write the data into my bucket that we can do but ownership will be still with us okay so before we jump to the next settings, I would like to stop here for two minutes. In case you are having any doubt uh, till now, you can ask me. <coughs> Which is the best way, like whether we should uh, disable uh, this ACLs or? Yeah, that's the recommended way. As you can see here, if I talk about few months back, there were this the both options were available actually. You can you can if you read the second one, objects in this bucket can be owned by other AWS accounts. Both options were available, but nowadays it's recommended that as being the owner of your bucket you should hold the ownership of all the objects inside it as far as access is concerned if someone will say that i have a requirement i have another team which is having their own aws account but they need to read the data from my bucket and after processing they need to write the data back into my bucket that is absolutely fine we can manage the read and write permission but ownership should be with the uh, account which holds the bucket that will make the things more simpler so nowadays the first option is recommended and one more thing as of now the second option is at least available it's not recommended but it's available that means if you want you can choose that but 
they are planning to discontinue this this one in upcoming few months so the good thing is i mean the recommended way is the first one you should go with that does that answer your question yes sir okay that's good let's move to the next set of settings so s3 has a lot of settings as we are talking about but that is only one time setting you do not have to do it every day once the s3 bucket is created once it is in place then you can upload the data you can read the data you can write the data and many more things you can do we'll explore like what different uh, stuff we can do with s3 buckets okay the next is block public access setting for this bucket a bucket can even behave like a website suppose you have to create a website you have to launch one web server you should know little bit about uh, you can say html and few more stuff javascript then only you will be able to launch a website but on the other side on the other hand s3 gives you flexibility that you can launch a static website very easily only static website that means you have suppose you are running a business and you are having some catalog different products different uh, pictures different pricing all that stuff right and you want to create a bucket very easily and very quickly so that's possible with s3 bucket how to create a website that is something which we will be exploring in tomorrow's class but as of now this setting right block public access setting for this bucket in case you are planning to host a static website on your s3 bucket in that case you have to uncheck this box because if you are not allowing the public access how the public how the people will access your website right so by default this is this block all public access is enabled that means by default public the outer world they cannot access the data from your bucket that is the default setting and i think that is good because not everyone has a requirement of static website by default your data should be secure but yes in case you have any requirement to launch a website we will uncheck this and we will disable this but we'll not do it today we'll do it tomorrow <clears throat> so i will be blocking it again to uh, keep our s3 bucket safe and secure from any cyber attack or any unauthorized access from outside <clears throat> okay moving to the next option bucket versioning as the name indicates that you can maintain multiple versions of your data for example you have a file and you uploaded that file into s3 bucket today tomorrow there is some change in that file change in the local file because when you upload the file into s3 there is no option to edit the file s3 is not a file system there is a difference between file system and object system when it's a file system suppose your windows file system is there right or your mac file system is there that gives you flexibility that you can edit your file you open your file into your preferred editor and you can add some content you can remove some content and you can save the file that's possible right s3 is not a file system it's an object system that means the entire object can be removed or entire object can be uploaded but you cannot modify that if you have 10 lines of file and you have uploaded that file into s3 bucket and after uploading if you think that okay let me edit that file let me add some more content you won't be able to do that. that's not possible but yes you have you have a file on your local system and you want to make some modification you can do that and then the modified file you want to upload again into s3 bucket now you have to choose you want to replace the existing file in s3 bucket because now you have modified right if you want you can do that or if you want to enable the versioning that means whenever you are uploading a new file with the same name suppose some file is there and you have already uploaded that file into bucket now you are uploading the same file again i mean file name is same 
content can be different so if you will enable the versioning that means it will maintain both version the older version of the file and the latest version of the file and after one more week you may have some more changes then you will upload that file again so in that case it will maintain three version two old versions and one latest version this is known as versioning concept it's very handy and very useful concept because sometime we want to maintain the complete history of the changes in my file and s3 is smart enough to maintain those versions along with date and time on this date and time this was this file was uploaded after few days on this date and time this file was uploaded and like that i will show you practically uh, after some time in today's class itself okay next is tags and as you said as you know it's optional in case you want to add it's you are always welcome to do that suppose this bucket will be used for a particular application for example so i would say application name okay and any any application name it's up to you i would say edit analysis analysis so this is my application name and so this tag i am adding now this will help later on to identify that okay out of hundreds of bucket this particular bucket is used for the credit analysis application but these are always optional just for like your knowledge i am showing you how to add that okay before we jump to the next set of setting i would like to stop here in case you are having any doubt till now till this slide you can ask me okay let me check randomly rohit any doubt from your side Uh, no uh, so rupa uh, so rupa any doubt from your side okay uh, seems like there is no sir uh, like this um, s3 is like a cloud object storage right so it is is this like something related to database or it is something like a file storage and more factors no it's it's not a database it's like google drive in google drive you can upload any type of file that can be uh, you can say audio file video file text mm -hmm. file anything right so it's not about processing it's not a database it's not a table concept it's just like mm -hmm. you can store your data over there the benefit is that suppose multiple servers are processing your data so those mm -hmm. server does not have to worry about the storage because suppose one server is having some uh, 500 gb of data on its own local drive yesterday mm -hmm. we were talking about ec2 instance right suppose mm -hmm. unfortunately server crashed in that case you will lose your data as well so aws has separated the storage and processing capabilities that means one of your server one of ec2 instance suppose it is reading the data from s3 it's processing the data and then it can write the output back into s3 that means at any point of time if your server crashed you will not be losing your data because your data is not available on the server data is separately stored on s3 so it makes your storage simple and it's like uh, redundant as well as aws internally maintains duplicate copies of that data that means when your server is trying to access the data from s3 and unfortunately suppose one of the uh, i would say physical location is not accessible somehow even in that case aws will provide you the same copy of data from some other region because aws is responsible for maintaining your data and they maintains your data in multiple location so that at any point of time they will be able to provide you your data you don't have to worry worry about the accessibility and the availability or any natural calamity or anything they will provide you the data 
Is that okay. clear, Dolly? Yes, yes. yes. Okay. So, that's good. like, uh, so we can uh, we can keep our own data in this, right? Like anyone can keep this all the data in this S3 store, or only the root user can only keep the data there. Uh, please come again. What what is the what type of user you are saying? So user means anyone can uh, keep that data, like keep all the data in the S3 stories, right? Yes, we can do that. But to be uh, if the data which we are usually planning to process that we do into S3. If I talk about Google Drive, right, you can keep your personal things like images, photos, videos Correct. and all that, Correct. right? But S3, if you want, you can do that. Technically, it's possible. No one will stop you. You can even upload a video file over there. But usually AWS is mainly for, you can say, project purpose, data analysis purpose. So we mainly upload text file or you can say CSV file or any other format, but the data file basically into S3 so that those can be used for the analytical purpose. Okay, so got it. Okay, let's come back to the next uh, concept. The next is default encryption when you are storing the data into s3 if you are storing unencrypted that's not a good idea because if suppose someone gets access to your data somehow by hooks or by crooks if someone will get access to your data your data should not be stored in a simple i mean in in a normal text format because that is risky you may have some important information some customer sensitive information and someone will get access that's not good so the best way is the recommended way is you should encrypt your data like on our laptop in usually in office laptop not personal in office office laptop all of your data is encrypted that means even if you lose your laptop if suppose someone steals your laptop right even in that case they won't be able to retrieve your data because somehow suppose they are able to crack the password or somehow they are able to log in or they remove your hard drive or something the data they will get is completely like uh, known human readable format they will not understand anything it's completely encrypted same thing is here if someone is trying to hack your data someone is trying to get into your s3 bucket the data should be encrypted so that even if they get the data they won't be able to understand anything so there are many ways to encrypt the data. The very first is server side encryption with Amazon S3 managed keys. There are two ways. Either you encrypt your data by yourself and then you upload the encrypted data. That's one way. Another way is if you say that, okay, I, am, I don't want to take this uh, unnecessary headache of encryption. I will upload my data as it is, whatever I have. But S3 should help me to encrypt my data. In that case, you can go with this option, server side encryption with Amazon S3 managed keys. So for encryption, different type of encryption keys are used. You can see the first one that is SSE S3. SSE means server side encryption and provided by S3. Another second one is server side encryption with AWS key management service. <coughs> KMS is one of the AWS service and we will be exploring this in a separate class. But just to give you a brief overview, KMS service is basically for encryption where you can manage your encryption keys. <coughs> encryption keys like a, I would say in simple term, it's a, it's a key. Suppose you want to lock your luggage, luggage, right? So you will provide that, okay, keep this password. That means you are providing your key and someone will lock it. That's one thing. Or sometimes you ask the next person that, okay, I am not worried about the password and all. You yourself choose some password and you lock my luggage. So there are two different options. Either you provide your key and then your data will be encrypted or you are completely leaving it to S3 that, okay, use your own keys and encrypt my data. <clears throat> okay. There is another one also, the third one, dual layer server side encryption, which is not required. We'll not go into detail of that because usually these first two options are uh, used for S3 data encryption. Okay, so we are done with 
basic setting of your bucket there are many more advanced setting which we will not talk today maybe we will talk about this in tomorrow's class so if you want let me quickly review what we did we created one bucket with some unique name we selected the region we did not copy the setting from another bucket because we do not have any bucket ready but yes once you have done all these setting for one bucket and later on if you want to create similar buckets with same settings that would be much easier <coughs> after that object ownership we are going with the recommended way that is acl disabled block public access we are blocking it because there is no plan of hosting a static website as of now later on whenever we need we will come back and we will disable this we will uncheck this box but as of now as a best practice you should always keep it blocked <coughs> bucket versioning we talked about but i forgot to enable so i will enable it now i am enabling it that means now i can upload the same file multiple times and it will maintain multiple version of the file <coughs> we provided one of the tag and encryption we are going with the first option that is server side encryption with amazon s3 managed keys keys will be managed by s3 itself and that's all click on create bucket <coughs> okay that's good you can see now the two buckets are listed here and which region these buckets are available that's also given here access buckets and objects are not public that's good that's what is recommended and creation date one bucket we created yesterday ending with 007 and another bucket we just created just one minute back okay so before i move ahead with other things i am again stopping here if anyone is having any doubt till now you can ask me why okay there is no doubt that's good so now the next thing we will do is uploading an object why we call it as object as i explained earlier it's not a file system you cannot modify the file once uploaded into the bucket so it's way it's works on object concept that means whatever action you will take that will be on the object that means you can delete the entire object but you cannot delete one line from the file out of 10 lines you are saying that sixth and seventh line i want to delete that's not possible if you want you can delete the entire file that you can do okay so i will click on any bucket you it's fine i will click on the sample bucket i can do that and now there is no object as you can see here you do not have any object in this bucket because we just now created this bucket so we'll click on upload and now you have to add files or add folder if you have a folder which contain multiple files you can directly add the folder here so i will click add files as of now and any file you can upload so i will upload some small files so that we can it, it takes lesser time so i will upload some image this not not this is not the image anything i can upload right so we are every day we are using a pdf for our class right i can upload that so introduction to aws let me upload this so click on upload just like we upload files into our google drive same same way the ui is different the provider is different because google drive is provided by google and s3 is provided by aws okay so this one is done you can see the some details here destination is this in into this bucket your file has been uploaded and one file with this size 513.6 kb and that's all click on close yeah now into my bucket you can see easily that there is a file this one the type is pdf last modified is this size is 513.6 kb and storage class is standard what is storage class 
I will explain in upcoming slide. So just like when you are launching an EC2 instance, you can choose the type of instance as per your requirement. Similarly, when you are creating a bucket or when you are uploading the objects into your bucket, you can choose the storage class. Now, what are different storage classes? What's the difference between them that we will be exploring shortly? Okay. So now one file I have uploaded. Suppose I will upload this file once again. Same file. Let's do that. I will again click on upload and I will click on add files and the file name was introduction to AWS and click on upload. Although I did not make any change, I mean the first file and second file is same only, but even suppose you are making some change and you want to upload the newer version, even that's possible. So you will close this and now you will notice that it's showing only same file. So how do I know whether it's a older file or it's a newer file or how many versions it's maintaining? So there's a small toggle button here. You can see this one show versions and by this by default this is disabled that means by default s3 will display the latest version of the file not the older versions but yes if you want to see the latest as well as all the older versions just click on this button and you can see now introduction to aws.pdf this is the version id every version has a unique version id and you can see the time June 21st, 635. This is the latest one. And if you want to see the older one, you see the below one, this one. The version ID is different and the time is 634, almost like one minute back. And you can upload as many times. It will maintain all those versions. If you want, I can quickly show you once more. I will go back, click on add files and I will upload the same file once again. and upload <coughs> click on close by default as you know it will only display one version but let's click on this and you will see that there are three versions available now 637 is the latest version 635 is the older version and 634 is the oldest version the first draft of your file file this way you can Right now we are doing it manually, like I'm clicking on upload button and I am choosing some file and I'm, I'm uploading it. But as, I, as we discussed earlier as well, that whatever things you do manually on the AWS console, everything you can do programmatically as well. For example, I am, I want to read some data from S3. S3 has a CSV file, comma separated values. And my code, suppose I have a Python code, which is running on my server. Because S3 is a storage. Don't think that S3 will help you to process your data. No, it's just a storage. Processing you have to do separately on some server where you have a compute power. So suppose I have one EC2 instance. What I will do is I will read the data from S3. I will process it and then I will upload that data into some S3 bucket. Okay, so I'm coming back to here. You can see now. So this thing we are doing manually, but the same thing you can do programmatically as well. You can upload the file into S3. You can download, you can delete, and you can even list the different versions. Suppose you want to know like how many versions are available for my uh, file. You can even do that programmatically. So both things are possible. So I'm coming back to PDF. In case you are having any doubt till now, you can ask me. So creating bucket, we have talked about object ownership. We talked about server side encryption, uploading objects, versioning of objects. And the next is S3 storage class. So before I start explaining this, I would like to stop for two minutes. If you have any doubt, you can ask me.
okay seems like there is no doubt so that's good let's talk about s3 storage classes so when you are uploading the file into your bucket you can choose which type of storage class you want to use the first and the very common is standard and you can read this description designed for so frequently accessed data more than once a month with millisecond access if your data you know that you are uploading into s3 bucket but ultimately you have to access the data that's the purpose right your server your ec2 instance or any other uh, other i would say uh, compute power right that will be reading the data and analyzing the data if you have any plan of accessing your data at least once in a month and that will provide you millisecond access that means it's very fast programmatically if you are trying to read something from s3 it will be very fast and availability zone is equal to or greater than 3 as i was explaining that your data will be maintained in three different availability regions that aws manage internally you don't have to worry about it aws will manage the data into multiple availability zones just for availability i mean just for providing you 100% availability so that if one availability is down by any region then it will provide you access from another availability zone the next is intelligent tiering intelligent tiering i will explain in the end because that has some special feature let's move to the next one standard ia the first one was standard and third one is standard ia ia stand for infrequent access that means you are uploading the data into S3, but you do not have any plan to frequently access the data. You may need like uh, once in a month or even once in a quarter. In that case, you can go with this standard infrequent access. <clears throat> you may be thinking like what a difference it will make. Whether I access it once a month or I access it twice a day, the pricing makes a difference. Because if you are not planning to access your data very frequently, then you should not go with standard. Because standard is standard pricing is more. S3, AWS charge you as per your uses. If you are accessing the data multiple times a day or once a week or once a month, it will be charged accordingly as per your storage class. So the point is, if you don't need to access your data more frequently, then don't go with standard go with standard ia because that would be cheaper as compared to standard and if you want to go further cheaper you can go with one john ia that means first of all your data is infrequently accessed that means you will be accessing very rare another thing is you are saying that my data is not that much important so i don't need to maintain my data into multiple availability zone usually this happens when you can you have the capability of reproducing your data for example you have your input data and you process that data and you produce some output now you are saying that unfortunately if that output is lost i am still okay because i have my input data i will process again and i will regenerate my output that possibility is still with you in that case you will say that i really do not want to maintain the data into three availability zone because that's again costly so in that case you can go with one john infrequent access and you can see here the very first word is recreatable you know how to recreate it then you can go with one john infrequently accessed data once a month stored in a single availability zone with millisecond access access is very fast you will immediately get it but in case the one availability zone is down by any reason then you will not get it but in that case you would say okay that's fine there is not this is not a critical data that if data is not accessible then there is a very big impact in that case you can go with this one okay and you can notice here availability zone is one not three the next is glacier instant retrieval sometime you want to archive your data you have processed your data everything is done you don't need this data anymore but yes for your future reference as a history you still want to maintain that data so long lived archive data accessed once a quarter with instant retrieval in milliseconds. They will be maintaining your data in some archive, but if you will ask it, you will get it. 
it's not like that it's not accessible but this is less chargeable because they will be keeping it in some archive or something and even in this case there are different different levels like how i will show you <coughs> you see this glacier instant retrieval that means whenever you will ask you will get the data in milliseconds the next is glacier flexible retrieval long lived archive data accessed once a year with retrieval of minutes to hours if you will ask for this data suppose you will ask s3 that i need my this data old data history data they will take few minutes to few hours it won't be instant because they are maintaining in some archive and the charges is as per your storage class the more faster you want the more chargeable it is if you can wait you can see this one glacier deep archive long lived archive data accessed less than once a year with retrieval of hours that means if i will request now i have to wait for few hours then only i will be get my data but that would be less chargeable so it depends on your requirement if you want something immediately instantly you can go with glacier instant retrieval they will charge you more but they will provide you data within seconds but if you say that okay i am okay to wait i can wait for few hours that's not a not an issue for me then you go with glacier deep archive they will definitely provide you your data but it may take some time okay and the last one is reduced redundancy non critical frequently accessed data with millisecond access not recommended as s3 standard is more cost effective so this is listed here but you don't have to worry about it no one is using this one so these are different storage classes one class is still left on the previous page right i said that i will explain later let's come back to that this one intelligent tiering as the name indicates when you don't know like which class i should go with because there are different different scenario you want to access it every day you want to access once a month you want to access it uh, once a year and you want to instantly access it or you want to you can wait for few minutes or you can wait for few hours there are different scenarios right now after all these things you may think that hey, i am i am confused i don't know which class i should go with in that case you should go with intelligent tiering intelligent tiering is smart enough that as per your usage pattern it will automatically find out that which class is suitable for you maybe initially it will keep you in under standard but after few months it will understand that this file was uploaded in june 2023 but from last few months no one has accessed that file there is there is no point of paying in standard storage class so s3 internally will move that file from standard to some uh, you can say infrequent access or one john or glacier that means it's smart enough it's intelligent enough to take the decision like which storage class should be used for your data okay so this is all about storage classes and 90% of time i am working on s3 from last 6 to 7 years we always go with standard that's the default one until or unless you have a specific requirement you can go with standard but if your client says that i don't want to pay this much my data is like a history data archive data why are you using standard then you should have the knowledge you can say that okay we have few more storage classes available and let's choose which storage class is appropriate for us so that we can provide a cost effective solution to our end client so with this slide we are done for the day in case you are having any doubt in today's class i am here to help you ah uh,